We are out in our chicken run today, and it's kind of a sad day on the homestead. We have to make a few cuts of our roosters. We have 16 out of 28, and that's just far too many. We're probably going to keep we're probably going to keep two to three, and I know that's still too many for the amount of hens we have, but we want some backups. And unfortunately, this guy right here is probably not going to make the cut. Some things that we're looking at is the behavior of the roosters towards us and the behavior towards the hens and their combs. And he has a really big straight comb, and we prefer the roosters with the rose comb. Those are going to do a little bit better here in the winter. So there's a few things we could do with these chickens. We could try to sell them and make our money back on them, or we could try to use them around here for dog food and stock. And we're going to go the dog food and stock route. We're going to process them out and feed as much as we can to the dogs and then throw them in a big pot and we're going to can up some chicken stock with them. It's never an easy thing to do, especially raising them as chicks, but we kind of decided with this variety of chicken that we knew this was going to be kind of you know what we're going to be doing because every year we're going to be having them hatch out and we're going to have extra chickens so that's just kind of what we've the path we've chosen shall i say on a separate note we have been still suffering like a minor hawk attacks just every once in a while it's definitely a hawk and it's a smaller hawk that seems to have difficulty doing anything with our chickens and we've been here for the times that the attacks has happened and it doesn't seem like this hawk can take our chickens or anything like that. Usually our chickens are able to get away and we're able to scare the hawk away. So they clearly don't care about the surveyor's tape and the little shiny things we have, um, but we don't quite want to net it off all the way. So we're still looking for ways to kind of protect the chickens. Like Ariel said, we don't want to net in this whole area. It's just too big. So what we looked up online was people are using black chickens to deter the hawks tricking the hawks that the black chickens are actually crows, which the hawks don't like. So we went online and we were able to find five young pullets that are Jersey Giants, which are all black chickens, and a lady was giving them away for free actually. The only con with those chickens is that they also came with three baby duck. So we have five new chickens and three new ducks. Yeah, so like Eric said, we had three ducks out of that, which is semi-cool we've had ducks before this is three different breeds of ducks and i do think one's a female and two are males so we probably won't be able to keep all, you know that exact trio but it's really cool to have some extra layers around here the intent with those again is just having multiple things to try and deter these hawks i think once the chickens get bigger it won't be an issue anymore and as far as breeding we don't intend to breed the jersey giants our Icelandics are the ones we want to keep true and we won't be hatching any of the other eggs out, just the Icelandic eggs. So we're going to go through these roosters and we're going to select which ones we are going to keep and which ones we are not going to keep and we will see you guys when we're in the kitchen. Alright, so we got our little tiny chickens on the stove and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of sear these and brown them up a little bit, try to get a little more flavor out of them before we add our water and our herbs. And today we ended up calling eight of our roosters out of the 16. Um, the reason that we had to do these while they were so young is, like we said, we had 16 roosters out of uh, our 28 chickens and they were just starting to fight way too much and be a little bit too aggressive with our hens. So we got rid of eight of them today. The plan is in about a week or two, if we can push it that long, wait till the roosters get a little bit bigger and then we'll cull five more of them and try to leave ourselves with three roosters that we're gonna keep. Okay, so our chickens are browned up and we're just adding our water to the pot and we're also going to add some herbs. We've got a bunch of different stuff in here. Parsley, thyme, some sage, a little bit of pineapple sage. We would add carrots and onions. We don't have any ready yet, so we're just going to do that for now. So the organs, the heads, and the feet, those are all put away in the freezer. Those uh, are good dog treats for the dogs. We took the entrails and the skin and the feathers and those are buried in the compost pile so we'll be able to use that next year in the garden. So we're going to bring this up to a boil and then put a top on it, reduce it to just a really low simmer and then it's going to go for about four to six hours. And in the meantime we are going to get some lunch ready because we're having a heat wave here in Alaska and we're going swimming.
Okay, we are heading out. trail and we've been on this trail in the winter and it's it's pretty tight yeah it's really overgrown right now but we're here and I think it's like seven o'clock and it's still super hot so we're gonna go swimming and eat all right we brought out some focaccia bread we got some balsamic vinegar and olive oil right there to dip it in and then Arrow made us these awesome salads in these mason jars. Woo! All right, and we are gonna eat, and we're not even gonna wait a half an hour before we go swimming. <laughs> I figured I would mention a question that was asked quite a bit in one of our recent videos and it is about the brown dead or dying trees. So here in Alaska and I, I believe other places as well, the spruce beetle has been going around to live trees and I think it's primarily white spruce trees, not the black spruce, and it looks as though it's just the mature trees. So it doesn't seem to affect the young trees themselves. And what happens is those little beetles, from what I've read, they lay their larva underneath the bark and then the larva eat that area and over time it kills the trees. So it's pretty prevalent in the area we live. I don't know if I have like a certain percentage on it, but if you look around like behind me, there's just a lot of brown. You'll see all the taller trees are brown. So that is a great thing for firewood, but it's also bad for fire season like right now because these trees are so dead and they light up very fast. So this is an example of one of the white spruce that have it and you can tell the bark is, you can just tell it's damaged and the tree is dead or dying if you couldn't tell by it being totally brown. Again, it doesn't seem to affect the younger trees. So I guess that's a bright side that the older ones will have to come down someday, but there will be the younger ones to take their place. We are back at the cabin and I was going to make a compost tea for tomorrow. Now we in the past have made compost tea and we usually aerate it. We're not going to be aerating it. We don't have the means to do that now, but all I'm going to be doing is putting some manure in this water. I'm going to let it heat up tomorrow and sit in there so it can steep for a while. And I'm also going to be adding just some of the last little bits of fertilizer I have. I have some kelp meal and cottonseed meal in here and I'll be adding some of that to here. They're granular so they do take some time to break down but when you put them in water they tend to be available to the plants a little bit quicker. 
We usually use worm castings for compost tea, but because I don't have that, I have reindeer manure available. That is what I'm gonna be using. And I'm just doing it mainly to give things a little bit of a boost since we're in the middle of the growing season and I just want it to keep growing really well. Something else I will add in tomorrow when I start applying this liquid to plants is liquid fertilizers if I feel I want to. This is Biomarine. I picked this up this year. It's just like a gentle all-purpose fertilizer and I, I really like it. I think it helps, especially if you have a plant that you notice is not doing very well. So I may put this on certain plants and I may also do some sort of liquid bloom on any plants that I want to be putting on more flowers if they're not putting on as much as I would like by now. I'm also just gonna put a little handful of fishbone meal and alfalfa meal in this tea. These are just down to earth fertilizers I'm using. I'm a big fan of them because we lived in Oregon and they're organic fertilizers. They're also slow release so they provide nutrients for your plants over a longer period than like a liquid fertilizer. But I did say a while ago and I, I am working towards just using more natural amendments that are local or around us. So I want to start using more of the forest and leaves, straw and compost we can get around us rather than focusing as much on these fertilizers. Tomorrow we're going to be diluting this and broadcasting it and now we are going to check on the chicken broth. So we've moved our broth outside. It was getting way too hot in there. I've run that stove all day. The broth is done. It probably cooked for like eight hours, I think. And we're gonna finish up canning it outside. We picked up this really cool stove used. It's a Camp Chef two burner stove. So I'm just going along and kind of picking out the big chunks um, before I actually strain it. So we've got our broth strained. We're gonna be putting it in pint jars and someone left us a comment and they informed us that you do not need to boil your jars if you're gonna be pressure canning them. So we looked it up and it turns out you're right. If you're gonna be pressure canning them for more than 10 minutes, uh, it's safe to not boil your jars. So we just clean these out with warm water and since we are gonna be pressure canning these for 20 minutes, we do not need to boil them. So I'm gonna get them filled up. So a step that we always do is you want to wipe these jars clean. We use a rag with vinegar on it and that seems to give us pretty good success on having jars seal up. So we ended up getting 20 jars out of this. So it's going to take us two batches. Our canner will fit 16 if we double them up. So we're going to do two batches, 20 minutes each. Pressure is down at zero. I'm gonna go ahead and take the top off. That's it. Canned chicken stock. So with stock, you can use it for a ton of things, but I think I find us mostly using it in soup. And another thing we really like to do is cook dried beans in it. And it's also really good if you cook your rice in it instead of using water. So these are just going to be awesome to have on hand this winter. So we will see you guys next time.